So the first topic I had was a question related to static electricity this week, because the person was wanted to know what happens if you have a negatively charged object and it is put besides a neutral object and what happens. So let's see if I can share with you some of these ideas. So first of all, if, oops, let's start at the beginning. So the first thing is if you have a neutral object and a neutral object. If you have two objects that are neutral, they will not attract or repel each other. This is this idea of static electricity. However, if you have an object that is positive and an object that is negative, then what will happen? They will start attracting each other. They have opposite charges. They will attract. Same thing if you have magnets and you put the opposite pole, they will attract. But the same way if I invert those, these will attract each other. Now what happens if the charges are the same? So if I have, for example, a positive charge and a positive charge, then here something will happen differently because if they have the same charge, they will repel each other. So that is one thing. If they have two charges that are negative, like this, if the charges are the same, they will repel. And that brings me to the question, what happens if they are different, but there's a neutral object that is involved? So let's see. If I have here, let's change color just for fun. If I have an object that is positive here and a neutral object, they will attract because they have an opposite charge. If I have a negative object here, the neutral object will attract the negative object. The strongest attraction will be from opposite charges. Now, if you have an object that is neutral and a charge object, the attraction will be present. Smaller than these ones, but still much present. So this is one thing that we have to keep in mind. Now, to add to that, my students wanted to know what happens to charges when you have neutral objects and um charged objects. So let's see if we can answer that question as well. Let's see, I was, had a brush right here. Good. Now what's interesting is that if I have two neutral objects that are hanging on strings, what will happen? They will hang and nothing will happen to them. However, if it happens that I have an object that is now negative, what will happen is that these two will attract. They will attract because the charges are different. Now, what happens though, if I have here a positive charge? If there's a positive charge, then the attraction is so much better. So here's something does happen. We have a string like this and a string like this, positive. So here what happens is that there's a contact that will happen. If it's a neutral in a charge, it will get closer. If they are opposite, they will, they can touch like this. Now, if there's contact, here's something to keep in mind. Electrons that are here, they're stuck there. There's nowhere for them to go. However, if there is contact, what will happen is we have an object that can be charged by contact. So here, it will, some of the electrons will jump here, the electrons like this. So this one here will become less negative and then we'll have some negative going this way. So what can happen is that here you end up with a neutral object and here things can go separate ways. But if the, the jumping of electrons is very rapid from here to there, this one will be less negative and this one will then become negative too. Because don't forget, originally it was positive. And as soon as this happens, what will happen is if they have the same charge, then they will be repelling each other. So here is an example of how we can see with just uh, this one here. And the, uh, the piece of equipment is, is called an electroscope. Electroscope. So what happens? We have here 
an influence. So here there's an influence to get closer. If they touch and a lot of the negative electrons can jump to the other. If you end up with a similar charge, then they repel. This is something we can do in the lab and it's always nice to see. So this is the first thing to consider. In order to add to this, let's see if I can show some applications for that. And I'll give you two examples. And we have two, uh, two students here or two individual. Welcome to the live today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And if it is the replay of this video, don't hesitate to put any of your questions or clarification questions in the comments so I can answer them back. So here we have uh, here a question. So what happens if it touch uh, if it, if uh, I touch a neutral object with the charged object with my fingers? Would it stay neutral because I'm grounded? That's a good question. So if you are neutral with an object and you get closer, what will happen is you will have, it all depends how many negative electrons is in the object. So that's a good question. So let's see. So we have a human here with an object that is neutral and there's an object here that is negative. Good. So if it is a small object, what will happen here is you're going to have a few electrons going this way and your neutral object will become negative, but then it will even out in your body. So because it's a small object, here it will be negative and it's going to add a few electrons overall. So the overall body and the object will be slightly more negative. Now you have to be careful because what happens if you have an object that is neutral like this because you are neutral and then you have something that is very negative. So here there's a few things that can happen. Actually, there's one big thing. If you have a neutral object or if at yourself as a body, you get closer to this negative, negatively charged object, let's say it's a piece of equipment, piece of equipment, it could be linked to the power grid or it could be a large object with static electricity. When you get close, what will happen here is that you won't have just a few electrons but you'll have so many electrons that you could have, but actually, you could actually have a zap and then you can see, uh, let's see a little arc, a little uh, electric or electric charge going from the object to your neutral object right here. So this can happen. On top of that, if you use touching the neutral object that is not negative with a lot of charges, what will happen is that these electrons will get uh, will get into your body, so you will feel the shock that will get to you because of how much electricity comes this way. Now, keeping in mind, if you have a, a glove, so if you have electricians, they will have thick blood, uh, thick gloves if they are working with uh, with high um, high volt, high current, because they want to protect themselves. If it happens, for example, that you are in water like this, and that's an extreme situation, then those electrons that find their way in their neutral, the neutral object in your body here. But now you can actually have electrons that are going this way. What happens is that you end up with a circuit that is created that allows electrons to go this way. And this can be very hurtful. Someone can actually die from this because what happens is that if you are working with highly electrical charges and object with a lot of electrons, when it gets through your body, don't forget that your brain sends a little bit of current to have your heartbeat. If you have too much of it, then the the electrons moving through your body competes with the signal from your brain to your heart. And what happened is the heart just compress. And then sometimes if it forgets to beat again, that's how people can die and have a lot of difficulties. So this is a, a good question. So if you have an electrician, you want to make sure you're in dry spots. 
you want to make sure that you have boots that are insulated. You want to have gloves to make sure that there's no issues when you are working. So this is an extreme in the workplace based on what we've learned in class. Good question here this morning. Very nice. To give some examples uh, of application for it uh, with, for static electricity. So if, for example, you have, uh, it's supposed to be a car and you want a red car like this, if you want to paint it, what you can do is you can give it a charge uh, object. So if, for example, I have here an object and it sits an uneven uneven piece of metal because nothing is perfect when you are uh, creating the body of a vehicle. So what you do, so we want a red car. So I should have had, so let's do a metal that is a different color. So we want, so, so this is a micro, microscopic view of uh, a, a metal here. So what happened, we have a spray paint. So what happens is that you have a negatively charged sp uh, sp uh, sprayer. So what happens is that when paint droplets leave here, the spray paint uh, sprayer, what will happen is that you will end up with the droplets going this way. So this is if there are no, no, if, uh, so if there's no charge at all, the droplets will go here. It will spread. Sometimes you can take a paintbrush and then a paintbrush will just uh, try to put the paint this way. It works. That's why if you have a collision and you repair your car, it is uh, nice. However, if you have a company vehicle or a brand new vehicle, and then you have here a negatively, a positively charged uh, body and you have uh, negatively charged paint droplets, what will happen is that those paint droplets here will want to be as close as possible to the to the, the metal. So here, like this, like this, and like this. So what will happen is that it's going to try to be as close as possible to the metal. And because it's negative, then you're going to put a coat of paint so you end up with paint that is even but also that is it you're using electrical charges to make sure that the contact between the two is amazing that's why company paint always is much better than if you have a car repair done on your job so that is something to keep in mind 